Welcome to the next episode of vSphere Breakroom Chats. I'm Shobit Bhutani, Product Marketing Manager at VMware, responsible for vSphere and everything around AI and ML. In this series, we bring VMware and partner experts to discuss VMware's vSphere and cloud products. Uh, these wonderful experts also share their background, industry trends, general tips for IT experts and our customers. Today's episode, uh, we have a very special guest today, Chief Technologist, uh, machine learning at VMware, Frank Deneman. We will discuss why AI and ML is so critical to enterprises today, and we'll give you some very important strategies on how to unleash your AI and ML potential. So welcome, Frank. Hi, Shobit. Thanks for having me. Great. So really excited about having you today, Frank, on this. You and I worked together a lot over the last quarter or so, you know, doing a lot of presentations, et cetera, together. So this is pretty cool to have another forum where we're sitting and chatting about our thoughts here. Um, <clears throat> Before we get started into some of the other questions that I was thinking about, can you please share your background, what you're doing at VMware, and most important, what's your favorite beverage? Mine is coffee. <laughs> so I'm a chief technologist working for the CIBG business group that is responsible for vSphere, vSAN, and all the other core elements of the platform. And I focus on machine learning and heterogeneous compute. So CPU, GPU, and DPU. I have an inbound role and an outbound role. With my outbound role, I focus on, or I deliver presentations for customers and events. And during that time, I uh, collect feedback, which I bring to the engineering group and the product management group. Uh, what I also do is I blog at frankdeneman.nl and I host a podcast together with Duncan Knapping called the Unexplored Territory podcast and where we talk about all different types of VMware technology. Great. Beverage? Of course. So without, uh, I start my morning with coffee and then I either go for a Coke Zero or for uh, sugar-free lemonade. I stop drinking water because that uh, becomes boring after a while. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Uh, always cool to kind of learn about these th new, you know, interesting things about that people drink. Uh, so let's jump in, right? What's the biggest driving forces today for why you think enterprises need to adopt AI into every aspect of their IT infrastructure? Like, you know, apps, databases, there's a lot of opportunities. And, you know, you and I talked about this earlier as well, but we'd love to hear kind of your thoughts. Yeah, well, AI and ML always sound so futuristic, but the main reason for car companies and organizations to actually go forward with, with ML is actually to reduce cost and to increase revenue, either by smartly combining different technologies or analyzing the data and automating an action based on the analysis. Now, ML is, of course, linked with vision and NLP, but the most successful implementations of ML within organizations is actually time series data. A great example of that is Deutsche Bahn, who log output of their locomotives, reduce their maintenance cost up to 25%, by 25%. So interestingly enough, for time series data, you don't need to have 400, uh, 400 uh, GPUs. What I'm saying with that is that you have incredible opportunities as an organization to start looking at your data. Wonderful. And so, uh, you know, for the North America listeners, right, Deutsche Bahn is the biggest local, you know, railways in, in Europe, huge company. If, if I remember last time I checked, their revenue was in $40 billion plus, right? Traditional industry, you know, and so, you know, traditional locomotive with slash railway, railway company. So AI and ML is not a very high tech thing. It's actually being used in very traditional industries with a lot of success. That's the key most interesting thing I found when I was, when I first heard about Deutsche Bahn. Um, now, what do you think enterprises need to do to avoid some common mistakes and, you know, get more successful? when they're doing their AI deployments? Because there's a lot of issues and issues uh, I, we hear from, consistently from enterprises about when they're doing AI deployments. Wanted to hear your thoughts on what can they do to make themselves successful, right? What is the mistakes, right, that, that uh, enterprises do, uh, which they should try to avoid to get more successful? Yeah, in order to become successful, you have to measure things. And the most and the best metric is the go-to-market metric, which is a combined metric. But if you think about what, what actually 
it implies that is how fast can the data science team release that model into yes. production now and this thought shows so many things first of all the most important part of ml is production inference so it happens where the data meets the model or the consumer hits the model now the second thing is that the data science team is actually the customer of the infrastructure team and so the infrastructure team really needs to understand the requirements of this new team and typically that new teams comes with new requirements new requirements from hardware new requirements from software right and so one thing we need to understand is that this thing is not a single application it's not sap or it's not a database but it's a stream that goes from ingestion or from a database all the way up to the end from into production and so we need to figure out how this horizontal thing actually impacts your whole infrastructure and thinking about traditional infrastructure it's managed in silos and so we need to communicate with each other and that's where it goes wrong typically typically those silos don't communicate with each other that uh, uh, that introduces delays and that impacts the go to market for the data science team and that typically means that the data science teams are going to shop somewhere else yep shadow it right where modeling starts to happen under under desks right and people bring their own pcs and you know i've been up in my one of my previous roles i've done that before it came back and said we need to bring you back into the uh it umbrella so to your point right the an end-to-end -end integration across platforms a lot of communication uh across the entire value chain is extremely critical to be successful because otherwise you're not going to have you know, go to market is going to be slow while speed to deployment needs to be fast versus spending a lot of time. I think that's that's really, really good thoughts there. Um, yeah. Now, we talked a little bit about the mistakes a little bit, right? And what it, you know, how to avoid some of these mistakes. Can you tell, uh, share a little bit more thoughts on, you know, some more strategies on how customers can handle some of these issues and get more successful? Yeah, a strategy that I see working with customers that are successful within ML or with ML is that they have a ML center of excellence where they place people from different silos together and uh, let them communicate. But the most interesting strategy that they have is listening, listening to the data science team. And so if you understand your technologist, that will help you build a platform that becomes successful. And that is the key. And one thing that I learned from an MLOps uh, uh, podcast was really interesting. And that was actually think about the tools that we use on a daily basis. Although we are really interested in new technology, uh, technology, we are closely tied to the technology that we use on a daily basis. The tools that we use make us technicians. And so there is an emotional connection with the tools that we use. Now think about an old car mechanic that has been fixing cars for decades. They have a certain way of doing things. And if we bring it closer to our world, look at the Linux, uh, Linux fanboys and the Microsoft fanboys. This is an ongoing discussion, even till uh, today, where we are actually focusing on developers and we're focusing on applications. These people are still going at it, right? And so if we, if we look at today's world where we want to build this platform, we need to be certain that, hey, we're building this internal platform. Now, if you build that, you cannot expect your colleagues to adopt your platform just because you tell them to, just because they're your colleagues. They are emotionally connected to their tools and what they have built over time. So that new platform needs to make their life better that needs to solve their challenges so you have to show it to them and you have to bring them into the development process right you have to basically say look this is the way it works but help me build a new platform together right don't expect unchallenged adoption of your platform involve them in building a platform better yet build it together 
Wonderful. And now <clears throat> another one approach is building an in-house platform. Another approach is going and getting one, right? We've got one, the NVIDIA AI Enterprise Platform, right? And we've just upgraded vSphere 8. Um, do you can you tell me a little bit of viewpoints on what you well about that platform, what it gets for the customers, as well as, as well as these new enhancements that we've just in, done in vSphere 8? Yeah, so in vSphere 8, we are working with NVIDIA, and we already uh, released in vSphere 7 uh, the NVIDIA AI Enterprise Platform, where we have included the drivers of the GPU and a particular toolkit that allows the data scientist to deploy particular containerized workloads with optimized software, with optimized toolkits to work together with the vSphere platform. Now with vSphere 8, we actually went a step further and we asked them to enhance the drivers to allow us to get more insights into particular lower levels of the infrastructure. So now what we can do within eight is to actually see what type of devices are connected to each other. So now we can actually understand that certain GPUs are connected with an NVLink. And so this is now very interesting for single host distributed training. So with single host distributed training, you want to have multiple GPUs connected to each other with a high bandwidth link. That shows this, this that, that driver shows us this. If you have multi-host distributed training where you are communicating across the network, you wanna have that GPU connected to a, a, a network card as close as possible because you wanna have that consistent connection between that GPU and that network card uh, within the host, right? And that is what that driver also provides us. And so what we've done together with that update of that driver by NVIDIA, we created a UI that allows the ML ops teams or the platform teams to provide that, that connected hardware as a single unit to a virtual machine. And that virtual machine can either provide uh, those hardware to the data science team or a Kubernetes platform to do containerized workloads. Wonderful, wonderful. Great, great, great. So really, really enjoyed this talk. Uh, with That was my last question for today, Frank. Uh, really, really love the conversation, your perspectives on the challenges, strategies, and some really cool things, you know, that today we, you know, VMware vSphere is bringing, right, with NVIDIA partnership today. So thank you very much for your time today, Frank. Thanks for having me. Great. And with this, we come to the end of this episode. If you like this episode, join in for the next one. This is your host, Shobit Bhutani, signing off. Have a fabulous day, evening, night, week, wherever you're at. Bye-bye uh, till next time. Thank you very much, Frank. That went great. Nice. Yeah, I think we're done. Yeah.